What's up guys, it's Friday. Um, it's like 6.30 in the morning. Um, really pissed because Nike announced that they are gonna sell their shoes at Amazon. I totally forgot about that. So I'm pretty sure Amazon's stock is gonna be up this morning, which means I might not be able to get my option back at a lower price. I might have to get it back at a higher price. <sighs> so yeah, that happened. Um, so let's see what's going on with the news right now. So literally last night there was an article that said these tech trends are not your friend, futures down. And today they changed it to say, these tech trends are not your friend, futures up. So apparently between last night and this morning, futures started to turn around a bit. Um, you can see the futures there in the bottom right corner. Dow futures are up, which is good. Um, and the NASDAQ should show up right now. Yeah, see the NASDAQ futures are up. So there's NVIDIA, they're up, Microsoft is up, Micron is up. So it looks like we might have an update today, but I was not anticipating this, so now I have to figure out what to do because I sold three call options yesterday and now they're probably going to go up in price, so this kind of stinks. There's AMD. Alright, so I guess we'll just see what happens when the market opens in like two hours. <laughs> Andrew just said check out Tesla stock. So, I guess, apparently Elon tweeted that there's going to be news on about the Model 3 on Sunday. Again, news that I missed, and uh, if I had known that, well, that was today at 1 a.m., so I would have not known that yesterday. Oh, man. See, this is why I don't like to sell stuff, man. <laughs> because I sell stuff, and then it goes up. It's super hard. It's super difficult to sell something and have it keep going down. It's, I just don't get it. It's... Uh, figure. I figured today would go up, even though I did not want it to. Uh, whatever. Guys, listen to this about Illinois. <laughs> hey guys, Illinois has about 17 hours to come up with some sort of a balanced budget, or it risks becoming the first state in U.S. history to be downgraded to junk status. The state has Ooh, that hurts. Two years without any sort of budget, and Considering the that's the state I live in, man. Is wearing thin. It is not good. Illinois seven billion dollar budget deficit. It's fifteen billion dollar backlog of unpaid Oh bills, man, that's horrible. Fifty billion dollars worth. Yeesh, I hope they come up with something. That's horrible. Much of that. So my phone died. Um, but one of the things I wanted to talk about was Cara. Um, one of my friends told me about this company, and they were doing well, but they were supposed to post results for this drug that they were testing, and like at the end of the year. But apparently, they already posted it now or something. That's what he told me and their stock's plummeting 28% today, and he uh, had put a lot of money into them. So it's kind of a lesson to be learned that if you just heard of a company and you really shouldn't risk that much money on them because you don't know much about them. He's only heard of the company for two weeks. He's done some research, he read articles, but sometimes those articles aren't really the most, truth the most truthful. He looked at their website, and again, I don't always trust companies' websites, especially if I haven't heard of them. So, um, yeah, lesson learned. He had used his 401k account, so he had like 7,800 bucks invested in them, and he lost like two grand overnight based on this news. So, really, really risky stuff to invest in companies you haven't heard of. So, lesson learned there. Um, he, he told me he wanted me to share this information so that you guys could uh, hopefully learn from his mistakes. I was in a similar situation when I first started. I invested like $1,000 in a company I never heard of just because I saw their stock was doing well. They ended up plummeting like the, the next two days. And I almost lost all of it, but luckily there was a lawsuit against them. There was like a pump and dump scheme where people buy a bunch of shares to raise the prices and they sell them all, all at once. And I was able to get my, my money back. But yeah, um, definitely lesson learned here is invest in companies you've heard of, invest in companies you know a lot about. Don't just rely on one source of information. Just really research, talk to other people, get their opinions. Uh, don't act too quickly. But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of this and look at the bid and ask how much lower they are than the actual price. So I don't even know if I'm going to be able to sell this, but I did try to place a limit order for 310, which would give me like a $2 profit, but I really don't think it's going to work. So let's see, let's let's just see what happens. Yeah, so it's not selling. Even though the price is 350, it looks like I'm going to have to go between the bid and ask here. I'm going to have to take like a probably a $100 loss or more than a $100 loss, maybe $200. Um, I don't know really what price it'll sell at. Let me try a dollar 50 to see if it works. Um, so yeah, I'll be taking about a hundred and sixty dollar loss there. Let's if it sells here. So let's see if it sells Nope, so the, the price is still too low 
Um, so it's not, so I'm gonna have to try a dollar. Let's see. I'm not gonna be able to sell this for anything. So now I'm taking over $200 loss. All right, so I was able to sell it at a dollar. So yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> so I got $100 minus the fee, I got $92 back. Um, I'm out of that position. I, you know what guys, I don't think I'm gonna invest in biotech. I just don't know enough about them. I don't feel comfortable with them. I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do tech. I'm gonna stick with companies I know. And if I do wanna diversify, I'm gonna do banks or Home Depot or other, other things that I know are like super legit. And um, yeah, so there you go guys. We learned another lesson today. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's see, let's see what happens with these. I'm really trying to get back into these. I don't know what's going to happen. I might have to modify or just compl place completely different orders. I'm not sure, but we'll see what happens. Got it. Thank you, Jackie, for the level. The Canadian dollar, by Listen the way, to this about Google and Facebook. This will blow your mind. Facebook set to make more from ads this year than every newspaper, magazine, and radio network in the world combined. In the world. In the world. That is insane. That's just so much money. Um, Facebook and Google, yeah, their ads are being used a lot still by companies. And um, look at, check out their um, their five-year charts. Look at those gains for five years. That's really solid. <laughs> that is really solid, especially if you had owned options the whole time. You'd have made so much more money. So yeah, um, I just gotta get ready. I wanna show. I'm gonna show you guys what I did with my options. I had to. Um, adjust my strike prices so I can get back in at lower prices. So I did kind of lose money in a way, but um, I was able to, to spend less money, but I had to raise my strike prices. So I am taking on more risk now, um, but I was able to get back into Amazon and Tesla. I'm still waiting on OLED because OLED is, is down for the day. So I'm hoping that they can continue to go down. That's the only reason I haven't modified this one yet. Um, I have my limit set at $10 and 30 or 20 cents, I believe. So, I'm hoping that that ask price comes down so that I can, oh no, it's at $10.40, I'm sorry. But you can see here with the, the Tesla order I did, five contracts, or actually I did five contracts this time instead of four, um, and I raised my strike price from $500 to $550. But I do think that if the Model 3 is a success, I still think it's definitely possible to go up to $550 by January of 2019. Remember, this is 2019, so I have a year and a half from today to hit that. And then Amazon, uh, I kept the same expiration, but I raised the strike to 10,000 or 1,030 instead of 1,020. So I only raised it 10 bucks, and um, it was a little bit cheaper. Uh, I'll put I'll put next to um, actually I'll put I'll put right next to it, like right here. I'll put what I spent on them originally. I'll put it like in red or something, or maybe a duller color. I'll I'll just put what I spent or what I I'm sorry I can't talk, guys. I'm going to put right here what I got back when I sold the options yesterday and then I'll, and then you can compare it with this number so you can see that I did spend less money but yeah I'm taking on a little bit more risk now because their prices started going up so I wasn't able to get back into those same exact call options but I'm really hoping with at least with universal display I can get in so I'm gonna keep my eyes open I'm just gonna keep monitoring it and see if uh, if I can get back in if not I might raise my thing a little bit more but we'll see I'll show you how much I spent so this was from yesterday. Uh, I sold it at $10.96. So as long as I can get in underneath that <clears throat> and, and take into account the fee, I should be able to spend less money on that. So I'm just crossing my fingers that I can make that happen. 5% of the time. Now, we want to call your attention to one index in particular, and that is the NASDAQ 100, because over the course of the last 20 years, this larger cap or mega cap NASDAQ index is actually one of the biggest winners. It's up on average 6% over the last six months of the year, and it's a positive trade around 70 some percent of the time. So, as we talk about the themes that are developing and what to expect, technology, biotechnology, the NASDAQ in particular, could have a big say, guys, into what happens. Back over to you. All right, Don, thank you. We're going to continue huh. the conversation on tech. What will the second half of the year hold for the world's most valuable company as they get Ooh, set to release we'll the see iPhone that. 8 of iPhones that everyone's excited about? Have the gains already been priced in around that in the first half of the year? Nope. It's a great question. Mm -hmm. I think uh, life on planet Apple has never been more exciting. It's our top pick for second half of the year. Me it too. reminds me a lot, a lot of uh, 2013. Stock hit a low in the summer of 2013. 
It rebounded 156% from that level. Mm -hmm. Valuation is very similar to the bottom in Apple in the spring of 2016. Can you imagine if that happened? A similar type rise, Apple Ooh. would be at about $230 um, from the low in, in April 2016. So he said if that happened again this year, I think this 8% pullback we see would be at $230. Wait, in 2013, the stock was down 40% off that high from, from 2012, right? I mean, it's not as if it's a, it's really been that bad recently, is it? And I just wonder about the valuation. Not that it's expensive ever, but what the market has been willing to pay for Apple. You know, if you got above 15 times forward earnings once or twice in the last five years, you kind of got there in May. So is there kind of a ceiling on that, do you think? So you got to remember, Apple was over $130 before falling to that $90 range in April 2016. I remember so that. That massive <laughs> correction. Right. And then you started to bottom, as we thought, last summer. And so off that bottom, you know, 156% increase would give you about 230. So, you know, we're not saying it's going exactly there. We have a price target at 202. But I see a lot of similarities in this cycle. And, and in terms of valuation, again, you know, I'll make this argument. It's 11 times X cash. The market's at 16.5. Sugar water companies at 22. You know, Apple's growth relative to the S and P. I have no idea what he's talking sugar about. Sugar water is off the charts relative sugar to water. those companies over the past uh, eight pot, years. Like soda companies. Uh, but sugar water is a staple, and we don't know if phones are stacked. Are phones a staple or not? Hell yeah, they are. What are you talking about? Where have you been living? Try living without your phone. <laughs> yeah, right. stupid. I mean, that, that's what we have to think about. Apple is so <laughs> oh embedded God. in our what life. What a dumb that's question. Come on, Carlos. It's You're better so than that. It's embedded in our life uh, with our. What's up, real quick, um, I'm doing some more trades. I decided to cancel my universal display um, and I, uh, I canceled the, the order for 11 calls and I just placed a new one for seven. Same expiration, same strike. I think I might've got it cheaper. I, I can't remember the exact price. Hold on one sec. I actually sold it at 1096 and then I just bought them back at, whoops, just bought them back at uh, 1085. So, was it 11 cents times 100 11 dollars i saved times seven contracts i got so i saved like 77 dollars so with my fee which was probably like 10 bucks i forget what it was it was something like that so i probably saved like 50 or 60 bucks so hey whatever i'll take it um but what i'm doing right now is i'm about to buy more apple calls because i added up all the call options that i have right now as you can see there, they're actually right next to each other. I added up all the values of all of them and it's really only just over seven seven grand, which I thought I had more money invested in them. And because I'm super bullish on them and I'm really bullish on their new phone, I'm gonna get some more calls. So I'm getting the uh, January 18th, 2019 call, $200 strike. So I have, I have literally 18 months for Apple to hit 200 bucks, which I do think is very, very possible. So I'm gonna get uh, 19 contracts by, for 2019, figured I'd match the numbers. I can only afford 19 anyways, so yeah, so that's how much it's gonna cost me in commission, $20.25, that's how much it's gonna cost me total. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this order, and that will be the last trade of the day. So I am pretty much all, all out of money. So there goes my order there. Now if I go over here, so now I have I got $666.67 um, and $200 non-margin. I'm keeping this money just in case I have any more margin calls. I need to have some money left over just in case I have another margin call, um, which means like I, my, basically my portfolio value drops too low based on what I'm borrowing. So I'm gonna keep that there just in case. And uh, I owe Scott Trade that much money now, which is fine. And uh, yeah, I think I hopefully should be done trading for a while. Those are my trades. We're gonna see the market close in about 20 minutes. We'll see what happens. All right, so the market's closed and um, we lost money, but not that much money compared to how we've been doing. But this week absolutely sucked. We lost over 24,000, I think, this week. So it was not a good week. But last week we made almost 10 grand. So for the month, we lost about $20,000 total. And considering June is a pretty crappy month, uh, I just checked my, my records last year. I only made $161 profit last year because it was just all over the place. And, and this, this year with, with me owning options, it's even more all over the place. So uh, we, the NASDAQ had a bad finish, as you guys know. So losing 20 grand, I don't think is the worst thing. I think it could have been a lot worse, actually. So I'm looking forward to July, August, September, because last year those were really good months for me. I made money all three months. 
So I'm hoping this year we can repeat that. So knock on wood. Come on, baby, let's do it. All right, so let me, uh, let's show you. I'm gonna go right into the computer screen here and let's look at how we did. Um, here's our balance. We're a little under 83 grand, but you know, we're still up for the year. So being optimistic, this is really testing my, uh, my faith though, <laughs> because we're losing a lot of money. But anyways, all right, so here are the options that I bought. You know, the trades that I did, I sold Kara for a loss. I rebought into Amazon and Tesla, but because the strikes that I sold would have cost me more money to buy back, I um, just, I raised the strike prices for each of them and that lowered the price. I was able to get one more call of Tesla, so now I have five instead of four. So hopefully that'll pay off for, for us. And um, yeah, so got in, spent a little bit less money, but had to raise the strike, but we got back into those. Universal Display, we got in for just a hair cheaper, so that was kind of cool. And then Apple, we bought 19 calls for this strike. So I'm really excited. I'm hoping that the iPhone does well and that we will make some good money on that. Now, this positions list will be kind of screwy because I got a, I sold and bought a bunch of stuff. So here you can see the top, the top gainers. Domino's Pizza, we did own before today. Same with Whole Foods. So those are our top performers today. Um, Tesla we bought, so you know we can't really rely on that number because I think we're even with those. Not quite sure, but anyways, you can pause if you want to look at those. Here are our losers for today. All these guys down here in the red. Um, Micron started off the day really well and then just dropped, so that kind of sucked. I don't know why, but they had decent re earnings reports, so I'm not sure what happened. I gotta look more into that, but I probably will forget because it's Fourth of July weekend and I got a lot of work to do, anyways. So yeah, there's that, but really just Micron was the worst one, and then BlackBerry, but everything else did okay. I mean, it wasn't bad. It wasn't too bad. So here are the watch list. So you can see who actually did do well today. Nike was the number one performer today on our watch list. And here's the second page. Pretty good day for these guys. Pretty decent day for these guys. And then on the bottom half of this, we, these companies lost money, so you can kind of look at that. Universal Display came down, but didn't come down enough for us to be able to buy the same options back at the same price, so we had to adjust our strike with that. And then here's the last page. Cara got slammed today because their drug, I guess, did not perform well, or their test results were bad. So there you go. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's finish this video. All right, so um, yeah, I hope you guys like the video. If you did like it, please hit that like button. And um, this might scare a lot of you into trading options, but just know that if you diversify enough, if you lower your risk as much in many ways as possible, like I like to set long expirations. This wasn't one of the worst weeks for the NASDAQ, um, but even even with that said, NASDAQ still went up this quarter. So I think they're going on four quarters in a row of gains. I, I forget the exact number, I think it's four. But yeah, so, I think, I'm hoping, I'm crossing my, I'm really superstitious if you can't tell with stocks, I'm really, really superstitious, but I'm hoping that the worst of the storm is now behind us and we can look forward to July, August, September and have some really good months ahead. So with that said, um, hope you guys have a fantastic 4th of July weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you guys, I think Monday, I think Monday. So we'll see you guys then.